every so often, you go back to the Bible, and sometimes we go there looking for solutions. You're looking for an answer because you're between a rock and a hard place. And every so often, the Lord takes you back to a story that you can relate with. And I want to read a few portion, a portion of scripture found in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And the story of Daniel, I mean the story of David, appeals to many of us because David is far from perfect. If you are looking for someone whose faults are obvious, <laughs> then David is the guy. And no wonder he's quite popular. Uh, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know the story of David. Uh, of course, David and Goliath. But a bit more is that David is like just us. As in he was a guy who, you know, you don't, lo you don't need to look too closely. You don't need a microscope to see he's not perfect. And so are we. we and I think the biggest mistake of the world today is they equate Christianity or salvation with perfection. Just because we are Christian doesn't mean we are perfect. In fact, far from it. Being born again is saying, I can't deal with my faults. I need God's help. And that's it. So if you want to find people who are broken and are not perfect, come to church. Uh, because that is why we need Christ. In fact, everyone outside of church is perfect. It is the people who are in church who need help. Just like when you go to hospital, that's where you find sick people. The people who are not in, in hospital, they are not sick. They can survive on their own. But the ones in hospital are the ones that need medical attention. And so when you come to church, this is where, you know, people who critically need God, this is us. So anyway, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. First Samuel and chapter 30. And the Bible begins by saying, David and his men reached Ziklag. On the third day, and the, and the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burnt it. And they had taken captive the women and all that were in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David, David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found the strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue the raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed them in the rescue. In Jesus' name, amen. Please have your seats briefly. It's, it's an interesting story, and I would encourage that you read, it, you read further. What amazes me about this story is at that point where David realizes that he's stuck. His enemies are greater than him, as in he has no cards to play. He has, not, he has no cards to play, as in I'm a Fikamuisho. Have you ever come to a place where there is nothing more you know how to do? And now unless the Lord comes, you are done. That's it. He has no hand left to play. You're looking at the situation and you're like, okay, I don't know where I should turn left, should turn right, should sit, should cry. He's already cried. He has no more energy. He's stuck. He's stuck. And this, I bless the Lord because David, this is personal to David. It's not just everybody else who lost, but David has personal loss. So everyone else is crying, but David is also crying because he also has personal loss. So he's not just pursuing for the, his team, but he's also pursuing for himself. When he's praying, he's also praying for himself. He's asking God for him. 
will I recover what has been stolen from me? He wants his wives back. Will he recover? Will he recover? Will he overtake the enemy that at this particular point, he doesn't even know whether they went left or right? How do I even start recovering this? Where do I go? How do people recover from this situation? Do I have a script of someone who's gone through this and they came out alive? Who would share with you their story? So that it would be an encouragement to you. You're between a rock and a hard place. And I don't know whether you've ever cried, where you're not crying but tears are coming out. mwisho. And there is bitterness in your heart because there is a point of view that feels like God has let you down. Why would you allow me to get here, Jehovah? David had seen God before. He had beaten Goliath. So he can't say that God is not with him. He slew Goliath. As in God has raised him to heights that he never thought possible. In fact, it is because God gave him victory over Goliath that he's running. He's running from Saul. And now even in the middle of running from an enemy he didn't create for himself, it's God's favor that is making him run. And now here he is. As if running wasn't enough. Sasa yuko na shida tena zingine. He's already running. He's here in Ziklag. He's hiding from Saul who wants his life. There is an entire army of a country. The entire army of Israel is after him. And the king has swore to kill him. An entire nation. And then he comes home and even the little he had in hiding has been taken. Sema kufika mwisho. Sema kufika maze unashanga. Sasa hata utaanzia wapi. And you know, the lesson I learned from David is that at that particular point of prayer, David didn't ask Abiathar who was the priest. Who was the priest? Because the prophet talks on behalf of God. God speaks to the prophet and the prophet speaks to man. Now, the priest speaks on behalf of the people. That's his purpose. He takes the grievances and the petitions of man to God. And priests are set apart by God. In fact, things were so thick that if a priest went in and he wasn't, he wasn't ready, he wasn't clear, as in he, he died in there. That's why they put a bell. So that when he's dying, you know, and dying is violent, they would hear how you are They pull him out because no one else could just walk into the presence of God. David, Abiathar, Abiathar's primary function was to take the, our petitions to God. And instead of David asking Abiathar to pray for him, to perform his primary function, David tells Abiathar, Give me the prayer show. Now, the king has no business having a prayer show. He's a warrior. He's not the one who prays. The prayer show belongs to the priest because it's the priest who starts in there. Hey! Into the presence of the Lord. It was, it was a function, it was a defined function for the priest. That is why Saul, he went to offer sacrifices. He was told, you've done a foolish thing. Yeah, okay, here he's not offering a sacrifice. But it wasn't common. It wasn't common. But this particular situation, David didn't hand it over. He said, give me the prayer show. Because Abiathar is the custodian of the prayer show. It's his primary function to present the grievances and petitions to God. He says, give me the prayer show. Because this one is not for asking someone to pray for. This one is too close to my heart. This one I will take to the Lord myself. 
So Abiathar hands him over the prayer stone. Then David said to Abiathar, verse 7 of chapter 30, David said to Abiathar the priest, son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord himself. Tonight, I have no idea what you're going through or where you are, or what your challenges are. But I know that everyone here has a petition. Everyone has a petition. I have one. I'm sure Pastor Caro has one. All of us have a petition to bring to the Lord. May this be an encouragement that we are praying to God who hears. Buonas, We are, tonight, we have set apart time to pray to a God who hears. And the interesting thing is this. The church, Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So the primary function for this facility here is prayer. That's, that, that's what Jesus said. My house shall be called a house of prayer. So we are actually in the right place to pray. God can hear you anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere. You can pray in the toilet. You can pray anywhere. Wherever you are, you can pray. But this I tell you. The Bible says, in the house, my house shall be called a house of prayer. May I encourage you today to just pour your heart before God. Because we serve a God who is our father and he can hear. And David didn't even pray many things. The Bible says that even before we speak, he knows even before we, he does what? He knows. David says, bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him. Verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue? It looks obvious, isn't it? Somebody comes and takes your wife and everything you have. The obvious thing is, why would you seek God for the obvious? Why would you even ask God, should I pursue for my family? Why? Should it be obvious? Deacon Monzia, is there a question there? Yeah. There is nothing. They, they, it's, it's beyond question. Yeah. Pastor Bill, if you went home and found a timutu wa family yako, Sometimes it would feel like kneeling there to pray would be a waste of time. In fact, if people came in and found Allah, niaje, they would wonder, wewe ni mjinga kiasi gani? Ati unapiga magoti uombe. Si kwanza ni utoke mbio. But David understood that just because you have zeal to pursue, that zeal does not necessarily add up to victory. Pia wewe unaweza enda na utandikwe. <laughs> David understood that fact. Unaweza toka hapa na umanga yako umefuata mbio kidogo pia wewe unyoroshwe hata wewe uende slave ka Joseph. Bona sana that even in the obvious you turn to God. Even that which is obvious you are dependent on God and have struggled with that portion of scripture. That even that which is obvious do I bring God into the picture? And there are times where the obvious has cost me. The things that I knew I would, that is all I in a jua. And sometimes it's failed miserably and it's even more embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. But even when you are at your strongest, the fact that you turn to God and you know, God, even in this one I know how to do, but I want to depend on you. And that's why David, number one, didn't even ask Abiathar to pray for him. And then finally, he was a warrior. He has 600 men. He has 600 seasoned warriors. Remember, the 30 great men, men of valor, were part of these 600. 
those guys, those deadly guys, were part of this 30. He, he had a formidable army. Guys who would take 800 men alone. Yet, that man still went on his knees with an effort on his head and he asked the Lord, not on the basis of my sword or the size of my army or our skill. He asked, shall I pursue and will I overtake them? And God says, go. And that's where the miracle starts. And in my head, the miracle begins by, he has no idea which way they went. The miracle begins there when he goes there, the right direction. He stands up and he goes the direction of these guys. And then he finds one of the servants, one of the slaves owned by the raiding party is left dead. Now, Jama, Akwa Mgonjwa, Ninjatu. Nandio nikajuala, yani unaweza sikia njaa mpaka upate fever. <laughs> this guy was so hungry that he, he was left for dead, that he was sick. Alpopewa bread of raisings, akaamka. Na chakula inaweza fanya mtu auze watu. Alipewa mkate akasema mdosi wangu alienda hivi nitawapeleka. <laughs> Aliuza mdosi wake. Muka, ata si mkate mzima. <laughs> Alipo wasconsa kabonga kila kitu. Alisema kila kitu. Scones. Alisema. Na kawapeleka maali maneno hiko. Ndiyo wale. Ndiyo? Ndiyo wale. Se, second miracle. Ndiyo wale. And they, the Bible records that. They recovered everything. In essence, they lost nothing. Verse 18. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl. Plunder or anything else that they had taken. David brought everything back. Our God answers prayer perfectly. Hallelujah. Our God answers prayer perfectly. He lost not a spoon. Or a boy or a girl, as in he specifically said, not young nor old, not a cow, not a goat, everything. And remember, these guys had plundered several other nations. So they got plunder more than they had. Yeah. So tonight, as we are praying, I need you to pray with confidence. Pray with confidence. Because we are praying to our Father who art in heaven. Not because we are perfect, but because we are his children. And we serve, we are praying to a God who heareth. In Jesus' name. Let's go before our Father in heaven.